everyone i am rashmi mathushika from ritushya national school today we are present about the science lesson in grade 10 now we are move to our presentation our topic is the world of life first day i talk about the classification of organisms grouping of organisms into different levels based on their common characteristics is known as classification of organisms Aristotle in 4 BC introduced the first scientific classification and the successful classification is introduced by Carolus Linnaeus in 88 AD. There are two types of classification. The first one is artificial classification and the second one is natural classification. Then I talk about artificial classification. In the artificial classification, features such as presence or absence of locomotive organs habitats and external features examples of artificial classification animals can be grouped as with wings or without wings plants can be grouped as ornamental herbal and poisonous plants now i talk about natural classification a natural classification is depend on evolutional relationships among living organisms In the natural classification morphological cytological and molecular biological features are considered examples of natural classification locomotive appendages of organism fins of fish feathers of birds legs of humans are example for it so now end of my presentation next i invite my friends we need to present about three domain system of classification Thank you, Rashmi. Hey guys, I am Sitmani Kapugamaria from Vikramashila National School. So, without talking any more, we will go to my presentation. My presentation is about three domain system of classification. As you know, there are three domains. They all are divided into kingdoms. But in our syllabus, we have to talk about kingdoms in domain eukarya. Domain eukarya will be talked by Gitni and Dilusha. In my presentation I am going to discuss about domain archaea and domain bacteria. While in the subject we will discuss what are the three domains. They are domain bacteria, domain archaea and domain eukarya. Domain archaea. Domain archaea are prokaryotes. They are live in extreme environments like as volcanoes, deserts, hot springs, high saline environments and polar ice caps. They are not sensitive to antibiotics. Therefore, we cannot destroy them using antibiotics. Examples for domain archaea: methanogens and halophiles. Now you can see some pictures of domain archaea. Domain bacteria. They are also prokaryotes, but they are sensitive to antibiotics. They all are living everywhere. They are the most abundant type of organisms. Examples for domain bacteria are bacteria and cyanobacteria. Now you can see some pictures of them. Harmful effects of bacteria. First one is cause diseases to human as well as animals such as cholera, pneumonia, tuberculosis and typhoid. And another harmful effect is food spoilage. They are harmful to us, but they are also useful to us. The useful effects of bacteria are to produce curd, yogurt, cheese and other dairy products, to separate fibers from coconut husk, to decompose dead bodies and structures. So this is the end of my presentation. So now I am going ahead to give me this presentation to improve our knowledge about domain eukarya. Thank you Sitmini. Hello, I am Gitni Dilakshi from Buddhist Girls College. Now I am talk about the domain eukarya. Organisms belong to this kingdom is possess an eukaryotic cellular organization. They have the ability to live in different environments and they are not sensitive to antibiotics. There are four kingdoms belong to this domain. There are kingdom protista, kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia. Kingdom plantae organisms belong to this kingdom also possess an eukaryotic cellular organization. They are either unicellular or multicellular organisms without organized tissues. They live in environments associated with water and mostly are photosynthesis. And some species are heterotrophic. Algae and protozoa belong to this kingdom. 
useful and harmful effects of protein star to human to extract arche which is used to prepare culture media to grow bacteria to extract arsenic used to make ice cream and some protozoas cause diseases to human like amebiosis malaria and sleeping sickness kingdom family organisms belong to his kingdom also possess an eukaryotic cellular organization they are unicellular or multicellular fungi species there are about 1.5 to 5 million species belong to his kingdom and they are decomposed organic matter in the environment they also form symbiotic associations with other organisms useful and harmful effects of fungi to human bread and eco fermentation like yeast to produce antibiotics like penicillin to cause diseases to humans and plants like pain pityriasis to decomposition of bacteria dead bodies and structures and spoilage of food so this is the end of my presentation next time my dilusha to continue our presentation about kingdom plants thank you gitmi and dilusha senanaita in victor shila nationalist Today, I am talk about the kingdom plantae. What is kingdom plantae? Kingdom plantae is the kingdom which with the multicellular organism is known as plants. Plant cell process cell walls with cellulose and they are appear in green color because they process chlorophyll pigment. The plant have chlorophyll pigment they can do the photosynthesis by using sunlight. Plants can reproduce both sexual and asexual methods. Now I move to the next slide. The kingdom plantae is mainly divided into two groups. First one is non-flowering plants and second one is flowering plants. Non-flowering plants. The plants that are do not produce flowers are known as non-flowering plants. They are two groups. First one is non-flowering seedless plants and second one is non-flowering seed plants. Non-flowering seedless plants. Plants that are do not produce flower and seeds are known as non-flowering seedless plants. Example: Marchantia, Proganetum, Nephrolepis, Selaginella, Bryneria, and Salvinia. Now I move to the next slide about the features of non-flowering seedless plants. It's not to large size plant and some plants are lack of tissue differentiation. no stem no leaves and roots these plants are known as thallus some plants possess differentiated vascular tissue they possess stem leaves and roots plants the shape like as thalloid body or small fern type all are autotrophic photosynthetic but some are epiphytes reproduction process act sexually by spores and fragmentation of vegetative parts and they perform sexual reproduction too These plants are distributed in terrestrial environment with low sunlight, shady and wet places. Non-flowering seeds plant. The non-flowering seeds plant means they are do not produce flowers but they are produce seeds. These seeds are covered by a food. Seeds are naked. Therefore they are known as gymnosperms. Example: cycas and pinus. Features of non-flowering seed plant. First one is two tissue differentiated present and process vascular tissue. Root, stem, and leaves are present. These plants can be seen as large-sized trees. Shrubs. Most trees have straight wood stem. They are autotrophic photosynthetic. Reproduction performs as sexually by seeds and asexually by spores. They are distributed in terrestrial environment. Flowering plants. Flowering plants mean the plant that are produce flowers are known as flowering plants. The seeds that are produced by flower they are covered by a food. Therefore, they are known as angiosperms. Flowering plants are divided into two groups according to the number of cotyledons in the seeds. First one is monocotyledonous plants and dicotyledonous plants. Now I move to the next slide about the differences between the monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants. Monocotyledonous plants have a single cotyledon in the seed. Dicotyledonous plants have the two cotyledons in the seed. Dicotyledonous plants, 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 plants are unbranched. Dicotyledonous plants are branched. Monocotyledonous plants have not a taproot, possess a fibrous root system. Dicotyledonous plants have 
a strong root system with tap root. Monofoliar plant have a leaves which are present parallel venation, and dipoliar plant have leaves which are present residual venation. And the monofoliar plants are bearing trimulous flowers, and the dipoliar plants are bearing tetra or pentamerous flowers. Example for monocotyledonous plant: paddy, grass, and arecan. Example for dicotyledonous plant: chilies, jack, and blue lotus. Now this is the end of my presentation. Now I invite Hasli Himaya to continue our presentation. Thank you, Dinesha. I am Hasli Himaya from Vikasnagar National School. Now I am going to talk about the kingdom of Animalia. When we talk about the kingdom of Animalia, it is a kingdom which is consisted with multicellular organisms. They are heterotrophic organisms. That means they cannot produce their own food. They are dependent on other organisms. They can be divided into groups as invertebrates and vertebrates. Now I'm going to talk about the uh, first topic under the kingdom of Animalia known as invertebrates. When we talk about the invertebrates, it is a kingdom which is consisted with vertebral, vertebral column or the uh, organisms without vertebral column and the backbone. They are, can be divided into five main phylum known as Nidaria, Nidida, Mollusca, Arthropoda and Echinodermata. Here you can see some pictures about animals without backbone. Now I'm going to talk about the first topic under the invertebrates known as Nidarians. They all are aquatic and mostly are marine. They are two forms as Medusa and Polyp. Medusa means candy and Polyp means attaching surface. They have radial symmetrical body. They are like predators. A characteristic body known as Colentrada is act as a digestive tract. Examples jellyfish, sea animal, hydra. Now I'm going to talk about the second main topic under the invertebrates known as Angida. When we talk about the Angida, they live in damp soil, marine, and freshwater habitats. Multicellular the body made up of three general layers, therefore they are known as rugblastic. They are body divided into segments, so they are known as segmented forms. Body show biological symmetrical shape. Some produce sexually and some by produce asexual reproduction. Examples earth form, leaves, and nerves. Next, I'm going to talk about the mollusca. When we talk about the mollusca, they live in terrestrial, freshwater, and marine. Multicellular, trunglastic, soft bodied animals. The body is divided into head, muscular foot, and visceral mass. Some mollusca present internal and external shell made up of calcium carbonate. This is biological, symmetrical body. They show sexual reproduction. Most of them are asexual. Examples bivalve. Snail, slug, and octopus. Now I'm going to talk about the fourth topic under the invertebrate known as arthropods. They live in marine, freshwater, and terrestrial habitats. Trapezoidal, cylindric, and possess jointed limbs. Some possess specialized limbs. Body show biological symmetry. They are separated as male and female organisms. They show both sexual and asexual reproduction. Examples: butterfly. Spider, scorpion, and centipede. Now I'm going to talk about the last and final topic under the kingdom of Animalia under invertebrates known as Echinodermatas. All are marine, have elastic, cellular body, separated into five radial arms. Examples: starfish, which is sharp, spiny body covering, body is star-shaped, cylindrical, or flower-like. A highly distributed body vascular system present in body, heart, brain, and eyes are absent. Body shows pentaradial symmetry. They show both sexual and sexual reproduction. Examples: starfish, sea urchin, sea cucumber. Now you can see some pictures about the current metas. Now I requested Nitha Shahara to continue this presentation. Thank you, Hasili. Hello, everyone. I'm Nitha Shahara from Vikramshara National School. First, I introduce what is mean by vertebrates and what are the examples for that. Vertebrates means an organism with the vertebrate column is considered a vertebrate. Vertebrate can be classified into five groups: piscus, amphibia, reptilia, aves, and mammalia. First, piscus. Example for piscus: butterfly fish, skates, and seahorse. Common features: body is covered by scales. Respiration is done by gills. Cold-blooded animals: eyes are without eyelids. Two-chambered heart: single atrium and a ventricle. The second one is amphibia. Example for amphibia: toad, frog, salamander, and the common features: water is essential to complete the life cycle. Respiration is done by lungs. They are cold-blooded animals.
and the third one is reptilia example for reptilia tortoise crocodile and cobra and the common features dry skin without glands cold blooded animal respiration is done by lungs and process internal fertilization and the fourth one is aves example for aves jungle fowl ostrich penguin and the common features process a light born endoskeleton process a streamlined body for flying warm blooded animals they have eye without eyelids and the fourth one is mammalia example for mammalia bat dolphin gorilla and deer common features skin is covered by hair process ear lobes warm blooded animals and internal fertilization okay then i like to invite rashmi to continue the presentation thank you netmi and next i talk about the last part of our presentation it is the scientific nomenclature Carola Linnaeus in 1753 introduced the binomial nomenclature the methodology to name an organism is regulated by International Commission on Botanical Nomenclature International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature these are the scientific names of animals next i talk about the standard of binomial nomenclature the first one is scientific name consists with two terms first term is the genetic name Second term is the specific name. First letter of the genetic name is capital, and other are simple. Third one, if it is printed, it should italic form. If it is handwriting, it should be underlined. So now end of our presentation. 